to the typography level one unit. Uh, you should have completed the instructional material where we talk about the different parts of letters as well as some other basic terminology for typography. Uh, so I'm going to take a moment to go over how I would approach completing the project. You should have seen an example that looks like this if you looked at the project already. So how does this get created? To start with, I went up in Illustrator to File New and created a new document. The requirement for the assignment is that the document be 11 by 17 or what's called tabloid. So if we go to the print tab here, we'll see some default print items. Uh, in this case, you can see tabloid here, and because our, our units currently are in points, which I can change easily here from the dropdown, it originally shows up as points. Now we see 11 by 17. To match the orientation of the other file, I'm going to turn to what's called landscape, which will tilt my file so it's wider than it is tall. I'm going to go ahead and cre click create. So now I have a new what's called artboard. I'm going to zoom out just a tad. Um, we can zoom out if we're on a Mac by using the command and the minus and plus keys. If you're on a PC, you can use control and the minus and plus keys. The next thing I want to do is put my alphabet on. We can see here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the text tool and draw a text box. I could just click and start with the text, but in this case it makes more sense to have a text box. So I'm going to put in first my capital alphabet uh, and there's no real fast way to do this, unfortunately. Uh, I, I'm still a person who sings the alphabet song in my head. So, all right, so I have my alphabet and I want to go ahead and get it to the correct size. So, 100 point is the correct height and width. Um, the other thing I want to do, I, there's five fonts to select from, so I'm actually going to pick Adobe Garamond as my choice and just set it to the regular. Then I also want to set my lighting. So I can do it a number of different ways, but for right now, we have this control panel across the top, which is contextual, meaning it changes depending on what tool I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead up here and hit the character part, and I'm gonna set 160 point for my lighting. So now I have my alphabet on the page, and I've set my spacing correctly. I'm going to go ahead and expand this box a bit so that it, it completely fills the space, and I'll show you right now it doesn't quite look like this other page, if you notice. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make a determination. I'm going to put a return in here. I can do that simply by hitting return on my keyboard. I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to center it. Again, the panel up here allows for centering. So I'm getting closer to the other document. The other thing we can do um, that's kind of nice so that it can be centered on the page, we know it's centered uh, horizontally, but if we want to center it vertically and we don't want to do all the math on it, there's a little icon up here called that will show a line to selection for most people as the default. Um, if we click on that, we can say align to artboard, and you can actually click and center it that way. Uh, if you don't care about centering, that's fine also. Now I want to go ahead and put all these lines in you see here. Um, these are, are things like our baseline, our descender, our ascender lines, our x height. So what I can do is select the line tool here. And I can start by drawing a line. If I hold shift, it'll make it perfectly horizontal and also perfectly vertical. Uh, and what I might actually do here, just for the sake of convenience, is use the lowercase predominantly for this purpose to put these lines in because the lowercase will have most of what I need. The only thing it may not have is the cap height. Now, not every font has a cap height that is different from the ascender line, 
but some do. In the case of this font, if you notice on the previous, the actual example, it does have, um, it's a, the ascender line is slightly higher actually than the cap height for this, oh, this particular font. So I've got one line in place and I determined just like the other file, I'm going to make it this light blue. I'm also going to, we have options over here, I'm going to make it about a half a point. I don't want it terribly bold. Um, so I now have the blue line. And I can do this fun trick and hold the option key and hold the shift key and drag this up to put my other lines in. Um, by holding the, that option key and the shift key, uh, the option key is going to allow me to duplicate the line. The shift key is going to allow me to hold it aligned with my other line so everything will line up perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process to do the ascender and the descender. So right now I have my descender line, my baseline, my X height, and my ascender. And what I can do is duplicate this I'm going to hold shift to deselect and I can duplicate this for all my other lines so that it's it's present on every single one of these. Uh, and then I can go back in and put in my cap height which as I said is just slightly smaller than the rest of the alphabet or uh, the, the ascenders. Um, it, it's uh, common that sometimes they are the same height so depending on which font you choose you may see that they're the same height, you may see that the cap height is taller than the ascender, you may see like this one that the cap height is slightly lower than the ascender. It just depends on the particular font. The other thing I want to do here, because I don't like the blue lines being on top of my font, I want to send these to the back. And I can do it a couple different ways. Um, the easiest way might be to come up to Object and go to Arrange and Send to Back. Um, there are shortcuts for that too, but for right now we'll stick with that. And then I want to go through and I want to label these lines, so I want to type the words for that. And it's going to default to whatever the previous size I used. Um, so in that case, the 100 point, but we obviously don't want it that big for the lines. I'm probably going to look at 8 point, I think. Okay, I did 10 point previously, so somewhere between the 8 to 10 range, and you can make your choices. We're not specifying exactly what you want to do there, but make a choice that kind of works for you. I'm going to identify these, um, in this case, most of them here. Uh, so I will copy this, not because I want this to also say baseline, but just because it'll copy my specs and put it in place. And I'm going to go ahead and select that and I can then again align these and I could actually come back and align these all later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the other ones in place. And because the cap height and the ascender line are so similar, I, I did identify the cap height in a different spot than the ascender line just for the sake of clarity. And I pulled back the line up here so that you could clearly see which was which. You may find too, like I just did there, that uh, the two are overlapping and you may have trouble getting the correct text box. So sometimes you have to play with that a little bit to get where you want to go. Same with the line, if you noticed. It wants to select this text box, so I'm actually just selecting both things with my arrow and then deselecting the text box. 
Here I decided in my file to make the words red for no other reason but just to make them a little more distinguishable. You can choose whatever color you want to choose. Finish the last ones here. Um, and as I said before, you can always align all of these together to make them nice. They're set to centered because, again, we're holding on to the same things. This time I want to make sure instead of aligned to artboard, aligned to selection. Um, otherwise, it would try to align to the, this edge over here, which is not really what I want at the moment. Make sure everything's right here and we're starting to get closer to this document we saw over here. Now for these parts, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you yourself know which ones you're identifying. I'm gonna go ahead and show you identifying one of them and then putting this last little Garamond and then I'm gonna turn you guys loose. So for example, if I wanna do the counter, I can come here and type, and I'll just type somewhere that isn't the main text box. Um, and I'll type counter, and again, I decided on red. Those decisions are up to you. We're looking more that you can identify the term. And I'm also going to draw a line actually pointing to where it is. Again, it's up to you to decide how you want to do this, whatever you think looks the best. All right, so you're going to repeat the, those two steps for the rest of the terms on this line. The last thing you want to do is in the bottom corner tell us what font you have as well as what week you chose. So by default it usually will come up with the regular or the Roman weight. This font calls it regular. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. 24 point. Let's see what size it was on this original one. It was 18. All right, so we'll make it 18 here. And you can see it's pretty easy to change everything. This top panel, the control panel, is really helpful to get you pretty clear on the basics. All right, and then I'm going to put that in the corner. So you can continue on and put the rest of the terminology and everything, and it will go ahead and be completed in another few minutes if I wanted to. Um, make sure to always save your file. Uh, we can go up to File, Save, and you'll want to name it what's specified, so last name, so if it were me, Kirchmerich, underscore typography, underscore level one. Um, and we'll leave it with the Illustrator. We can tell it where to save it. In this case, I want to try to get it to my desktop. You can save it wherever you choose. It's a good idea to sync your computer with your box to make that part a little bit easier. And now that's saved and ready to go for me.